Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us for another session of the Dublin Esophageal Grand Rounds. Today, our guest is Dr. Ted Shorts from Cornell University. He's the director of skull base surgery there, and he will be talking to us about a very exciting topic of innovation in technical aspects of neurosurgery. And we're going to review some surgical videos discussing some of more creative non-traditional ways to approach lesions that are very difficult to reach. Uh, Ted, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, Aaron. Thank you. Um, Ted, if that's okay with you, I'd like to review some few slides, get your opinion about how can we innovate during surgery. That's a very top topic, obviously, to uh, discuss, but it's one that I think is very important. What is the philosophy of innovation? I think the world is a perpetual motion and we must invent the things of tomorrow. One must go before others, be determined and exacting, and let your intelligence direct your life, act with audacity. I think this quote that from this individual, I think sums up many of what we go through every day to try to come up with creative ways to do surgical uh, 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 solutions to difficult problems. And uh, we have had recent innovations, all of which are well known to us, you know, navigation, radio surgery, minimal invasive spine surgery, endoscopic techniques, endovascular approaches, intraoperative fluorescence, and robotics and nanotechnology in the future. But when it comes to really doing a procedure you haven't done before, but you know it may help the patient, how do you cross the line of challenging the dogma, what you learned in surgery, and residency before and try to make the leap of faith to do um, a uh, new approach. Those are challenges we face every day. Things that has worked for me is learning from your mistake, retaining confidence in the face of failure, and really um, remembering innovation and creativity in every surgery and see how you can improve your, um, your approach to a difficult lesion. Obviously, we all go through metamorphism. We all, through our career, can be at different stages, be a different surgeon, hopefully with increased strengths. So let me ask, start by asking you, what do you consider the ingredients for operative innovation? Obviously, you have been a pioneer in endoscopic surgery. When you started endoscopic surgery, there were no fellowships. So how do you make that transition? of saying, you know what, I've never done this before, but I know it's the right thing to do, and I'm going to go ahead and take the risk and do it. Yeah, it's a great question. And, uh, you know, the way you phrased it is interesting, because you said, I know it's the right thing to do. Um, but I think at the time, I wasn't sure it was the right thing to do. And, and I think when you, when you try something new, it's hard to know for sure uh, whether it's the right thing to do, because you really don't have enough experience doing it to know that. Um, I was doing pituitary tumors and was frustrated with the way I was doing them and the way I had been taught to do them. Um, I felt that using fluoroscopy, first of all, was not a great way to know exactly where you are. You know, we do a lateral fluoroscopy, but it really wouldn't give me information in the other plane. And I sometimes didn't feel the confidence to know that I knew exactly where I was. I was uh, trained to use a sublabial incision and put in a hardy retractor and I had a limited field of view which is disorienting and with limited uh, fluoroscopy it's not that hard to get lost and so I was in the right spirit to try something new and try something different uh, and you know endoscopy made a lot of sense the, honestly the, the, the first uh, idea I had of doing it endoscopically came from talking to my chairman so you know Phil Stieg at the time said to me uh, people are starting to do these endoscopically. Maybe you should think about doing that. And I give them a lot of credit for, for that and for having someone who had more global, you know, wisdom to see what was going on in the field and try to sort of push me in that direction to build his department. And I took, uh, well, the other key thing was finding a collaborator, you know, and I, and I think we learn an incredible amount from other people. Um, and you have to be open to constantly learning throughout your training. Don't feel like you graduated from your residency training and the neurosurgery book has been written and it's formed and it's done. But I think you have to always come into the OR saying, you know, what is wrong